shooting Maria at the compound center, the, the Jones right. Act, where it costs five dollars for an avocado, it has to be shipped into the that's Dominican right. Republic. That's your real problem. Yeah. So no. Yeah. But, so therefore, for you, but yeah. you're saying, but listen, Peter, you're, you're saying that well, they'll have food. Peter, what? They're gonna go out and go fishing in a boat to get some food for three million no, people. No, no, no. No, the no, farming, no, the no, farming no, is the too. farming has been destroyed. The commercialism, the the hotel industry, the tourist industry, the tourist industry has destroyed the island basically because. Of the well, I think I think that case can be made, but the case can also be made, and don't don't forget this, David. I'm, you know, I'm not carping on it for just out of whatever. It's, there still is land, and there still is money to be made. There is water. 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 There is I agree. It's going to take. I'm just saying it's going to take 20 years. You ask me, yeah. I'll answer. They have to go either yeah. become a state, an official state of the United States, which they'll probably do now. They always lose by like one well, percent. And then the it's second, good, yeah. or they don't want to remain a Commonwealth state because they're disenfranchised people by not being able to vote. So the, there's a there's a dualistic problem to have independence. No money. The island's been raped economically. It's been and, and environmentally, storm-wise, you know, it's been it's been destroyed. And it, there is hope. Of course, there's always hope, Peter. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the economic outlook is. But they they have to vote. They have been badly damaged, and certain people have been hurt a lot, and other people have benefited. So keep the whole thing in a balanced perspective. That that that's my role. As a, as a nominally, you know, political theorist, there's stuff, stuff gained and stuff lost. Has the net loss has been terrible, terrible. You're right. Definitely. Oh boy. Oh boy. I hope this car doesn't break the little. Oh, this. Oh, oh. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go fast. Go fast. Go fast. Go fast. Okay. Eight months after Hurricane Maria, the Relief Foundation invited me to join their Puerto Rico volunteer mission to help rebuild communities. Yeah, three and a half million people. But how many people? Uh, working, what percentage of the economy is people have employment? Well, the, the part that I know that is about forty-three percent working people. So it's gone down since the hurricane. Yeah. What was right. it? What was it before the hurricane? Well, always it's just like a working people, about forty-three thousand people. Then the other people probably they work by themselves or something like that. Then that. But the working steady but, with the government is about 43%. But how many people have lost? What percentage of people are out of work because of the hurricane? Well, right now it's uh, the statistics almost stay the same. The only thing that a lot of people they went to the state. Uh huh. Yeah. How many people went to the states? Do you know? About 400, 425,000. Four hundred twenty-five thousand in the last couple years. Really, but since the hurricane, how many people have left? Well, maybe from the hurricane, about two hundred thousand. We have a problem right now with the school, and we have a problem on unemployment because they don't come up with a big industry to give them a job to the people. We have a tour; the tour gets stuck for a while because most of the hotel. It's in repair. Uh, right now, we may have a tour and a cruise ship, but not in a hotel. Mm -hmm. 
but not as much as before, obviously. But it is picking up. Yeah, it's gonna pick them up maybe by the November, December. That's what they say, yeah. I hope. How are you? Yeah. I'll hop right out. You know, they have, uh, there are a lot of them, basically. You know? well, the batteries are charged. Let me just show you where they're charging. Are they soft? Candies? Oh, hi. I'm with Nick. Wait, where they filmed Despacito, so La Perla was a community, and it's outside the walls, too. And why the British decide to enter through that place is because in Piñones, was a slave area. So they thought if we entrance to the slave area, these slaves are gonna join us and we are going to fight together with the Spanish. And also the governor asked for the help of all the local peoples, including the women. And that's the role of the women. The women were crossing one side to the other side with small boats, but with lit torch. So they confused the British. So that's how when the British came after fighting two weeks with the slave, they saw a huge army waiting for them and a lot of people crossing with lead torch. And that's how they decide to retire. And we consider this victory not only to the Spanish, but to the people that for the first time fight for their territory. So that's the story behind, now we can walk. Okay, so the governor, one of the ways he took money uh, of, the, of San Juan, yeah. instead of the crown, it was by the, t by the houses, the, what the, the, the proportion of the house they have on the street. So the smaller the house it was, the, ta the less taxes the people pay. organización se llama Relief Foundation. Ellos están aquí hoy, están compartiendo con nosotros, están disfrutando de Miramar Food Truck Park y su líder, Peter, Pedro. How many people have been to Puerto Rico before this trip? Okay, how many people have never been to Puerto Rico? This is your first time. So you got some new people here, right? So um, basically, uh, the Relief Foundation stands for relieving and embracing lives interrupted by Earth's forces relief. You've heard of flash mobs, we do flash relief. Uh, we use social media and technology kind of organize and come together. This is, uh, I think it's like one of our eighth or ninth trip. Uh, it started out in 2005 with Hurricane Katrina. We put an orphanage in Port-au-Prince after the earthquake there. Did some Japanese, uh, a Japanese tsunami cleanup um, after that happened. Uh, Georgia tornado cleanup, etc. all the way through to Houston this past year. Now we're here. The communities where we are going, there have been months without proper medical care so we were able to put together a technical team and we have uh, on the ground as well as over telemedicine to deliver that care that is much needed so I really want to thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to bring technology as well as uh, human effort and relief to be able to help thank you so much where are we going once I learned that, I need people in the military. Hey, I'm Joe. How you doing? <laughs> Joe, Joe, you're that dude. <laughs> <laughs>
This is a new community garden, or yeah. not garden, but you know, places where NGOs can come through and um, you know house up, or they're getting bunks ready for people. Um, How many people are bunking? I'm, I'm not completely sure. This yeah. is sort of a new thing. Um, it's not just for NGOs; it's for uh, the elderly in the community as well, because right. they're they're kind of trapped um, in the surrounding areas. You know, their houses are in need of. Have you seen the houses? Intense, fi- you, know, f- you know, fixing up. Yeah. Um, most of their families have, have gone back to the States. So they're, they're kind of stuck here and alone. And we want to kind of create that central gathering point for them to do fun activities. Like, great. you know, joining in music, cooking. Oh. Um, things like that. Games. That's great. But, um, you know, like I said, we also try and <coughs> want to make this a hub for uh, nonprofit organizations that kind of have a self-sustainable um, you know mission about them as well Sammy good I'm great we just got so hung up in the past couple days on GPS stuff we missed you in Ponce We're by a half you're hour. Here now. Yeah, but here we are. And here we there are. There we go. Are you guys gonna get some good footage at least? Yeah. You don't mind? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We've so been married for 50 years. So that's right. All right. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> we were like, if we got to like 100 something. Like I was like, is she 108? <laughs> that's possible. Can I use this thing? Yeah, I just chipped away everything up here. Yeah, I can it off? Yep. It's been a dream of mine. It's a problem. In su casa, agua. Beautiful. Okay. Very nice. Nice. Thank you. All right, I got you a driver and I'm about to get you a translator. Great. Yeah. Cool. God dang it. See. Make it moves. Make it moves. Make it happen. The ladies had it this morning. It's really Margaret. If you want all the stuff you have, you can just keep putting one. Sure. Okay, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'll just keep running that. That's great. That was cool. What else do you have to see? Books, students' files, desks, everything just left. It's like you got 30 seconds to leave the building, we're closing it. Take only what you can carry. So it was announced a few months ago that they're going to be closing 283 of the 1,100 remaining public schools that were open in August. Um, They were going to be closing almost 300 of them. Um, But thankfully, uh, somehow through the courts, that got pushed back, so it's not not happening for now. We started working here when I first got here in mid-November, so it's been 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 about six and a half months of uh, work here in this this, this compound so far. Yeah, the interesting part about this is like, how do you how do you build a community when the the government's is completely like tied down by like an illegal seventy billion dollar debt, and like can't declare bankruptcy on this like a normal a normal state like Detroit can declare bankruptcy, yeah. Puerto Rico on the other hand cannot. Wow. It just shifted the box. Wow. So that's the company, huh? Yeah. It's a small uh, company out of Northern California. Uh, the fourth one that they've ever installed. The first one in Puerto Rico. Really? Look at that. So yeah, the, um, the panels, come, panels come in to uh, in four quadrants. There's uh, four charge controllers that control the voltage and everything. And it goes down to this uh, bank of uh, 
24, 24 two volt batteries. And the batteries come up into these uh, three inverters. And from the inverters um, out through the system and to the rest of the school. Wow. Then the but, diesel generator back here kicks on automatically if there's too much power getting drawn or if there's not enough. Really? Uh, the panels aren't connected. These are, these are two volts. Are the facility any two volts? Yeah, they're, uh, but they're giant. They're like way, way a lot. You can't pick these up. They go all the way down to the floor. Yeah, really? Yeah, it's a low voltage, high current. Wow. Beautiful. A work of art. Beautiful. I think these are each like 365 watts. Each what? panel is 365 uh, watts? 345 watts. I'm sorry. Each panel. Yeah, each panel is 345 watts and we have 48. Yeah, then with the, the panel store on top of these uh on top of these here, so there's still plenty of walk space to access the, the brain and all the all the parts and fuses and the generator. Right. So you put this before we came down, you put this together. Yeah. Beautiful job. Unbelievable. Congratulations. There's hope. The root cause of all this is the colonization of the island. And they, the, United, the United States government doesn't want Puerto Rico to be resilient. It doesn't want Puerto Rico to be able to take care of itself because if somebody takes care of themselves, you can't occupy them. It's been a, it's been a relationship of extraction since 1898. Every bit of the United States' involvement has been like, how much money can we suck out of this island? One avocado is about five bucks with tax at the store because wow. the avocados are grown in Dominican Republic, about a hundred miles from the west coast of here. But because of the Jones Act and the colonial shipping uh, laws, those avocados have to travel on a Dominican boat to the United States, change hands in the port, get put on an American ship, and then ship all the way back down here. Oh, yeah. Like even even now, the uh, the governor's uh, trying to even though he said right after the storm that they like. Anybody that tries to hide any information regarding the hurricane is will have hell to pay. And that same dude is now like doing everything in his power to hide the actual death toll of the hurricane, which is about almost 5,000. I know it may be higher. Oh, it's yeah. definitely higher. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, like 5,000 deaths, 5,000 deaths in nine months and 3,500 square miles. That's that's a lot of grief and that's a lot of emotion to process and like. Because it, you know, by the law of numbers, you know, 5,000 people and this small of a space, that's somebody's aunt, that's somebody's grandma, that's somebody's cousin or uncle. They don't, they don't want this to be humanized. Okay. Like this is, they, they just want to, they just want to build more resorts, make more fast food jobs. Ventilators help them breathe and scoliosis makes it difficult to move them. Alisea and her daughters oh, waited out Hurricane Maria here in Ponce, a city on the island's southern coast. But the chaotic aftermath put Patricia and Natalia in grave danger. Sammy, smile. We're here live on location on top of, what's her name? Diana. Diana's rooftop. Come on, we're, we're filming here. You gotta give me some, oh, there's Jody doing, making moves. Jody's uh, laying down the ceiling. You, if I hold it and you can do both hands. Right, sorry. And we'll maximize. Oh, spot. <laughs> wow. Can you get a little more water? This blackness. This blackness. We're going full Shakespeare. <laughs> oh. Whoa. I got you. I got you. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm okay with that too. Like I'm not upset. You're like it feels good. Yeah. yeah. You guys are riding the big van. Baby greens right here, and we're planting four different types of onions to see which ones grow best. Oh, really? Um, and then, all, all the same kind of uh, vegetable? Uh, so this is like a mix of different lettuce, and then over there there's four types of onions, and then around the corner we have a bunch of different mixed peppers that we're growing. Great. Nothing like seeing organic soil. I'm just gonna show your hands. The idea of the garden here is to stimulate the mental health of the elderly people in this community. Uh, so I was going around when I came here, someone brought me to this community and they took me to this old lady's house who had water dripping onto her bed every single night. They're like, oh how can God. you help there? So we went there and she pretty much, the only contact she has with any other human is once a week when a social worker comes for 30 minutes. The rest of the week she's without power, just living alone. Still. And they said they need someone to kind of help her get her life together, still. get it started. Still, still actually, well not anymore because we just fixed it. Oh. We literally just came back from that work site. That. We spent all morning sealing the roof. Okay. So she's good now, no more water on her bed. 
yeah, for at least a few years. And uh, so I was there and I said, if we help her, if we fix this, then what? We leave, the house just goes back to the way it was. How do we do something to make this sustainable? And so they took me all around the community. I met about 20 different, just elderly people living alone without power. Same situation. Only once a week, the social work students go around on Sunday and talk to them for 30 minutes. Great. So I said, "How? what do we do? How do we fix this? So this school was, this used to be a school before a hurricane came, got destroyed. Uh -huh. They gave the rights to the University of Puerto Rico, Umacao. Yeah. And I said, can we use this as a community center for the elderly people? Set up workshops, games. There's tons of instruments in there. We're setting up a music center. Wow. And once a week, instead of them going house to house and going individually, yeah. they're going to bring them all here yeah. at once, yeah. pull them out one at a time, but they're going to be able to talk to each other yeah. and have a community yeah. of each. And it's just what that does for, for especially elderly people, their yeah. mental health yeah. and makes it important. And I mean, what's garden is responsibility, you uh -huh. know? planting it, keeping it, tilling it, making yeah. sure what you're doing is growing. Uh -huh. Having responsibility does so much for the mental health of people and it's that's the whole idea here. We only have one day here, but how do we make it so years later this is still benefiting people? Yes. This we've actually got a contract from the students from the University of Puerto Rico Social Work School that once a week Sunday part of their curriculum is they have to do this. Gather everyone, bring them here, do social services. Is that after the hurricane that started? Uh, no, this actually started when I came a month ago. If we do this and we come we set it up we need to make sure this is yeah. happening and running they wrote me a contract yeah. and their curriculum the students now have to do it you're gonna get your MD soon and you know, that's great that medical people are here with regular volunteers and yes I, I can't say enough about it that the you know it's a, there are a lot of great people in the medical field who do this so yeah I, I, I mean I, I think, I think the reason anyone becomes a doctor at their heart, even if they don't believe it anymore or care to admit it, is they want to do good. Of course. That's the whole reason. And I think a lot of times you forget that after the years of studying and the textbooks and the competition in this school and this residency. And I think for me, I'm really trying hard to combat that is running these trips all the time, always yes. refocusing, realigning. What's your purpose here? What are you here? As much good as you can with the time you have. Yeah, I came down for one month. I was supposed to leave December 4th and I was just like, oh, I like it here. <laughs> I'll see y'all later. Yeah, I'm really considering just missing school for Friday, and then Monday, and then Tuesday, and then just see what happens. <laughs> yeah, you know, learn some Spanish. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to do around. There's just so much need, man. It's crazy. He was in Colorado getting insulin for the um, when the storm hit. Oh, wow. And then wow. he was he was stuck in Charlotte where I was living, and um, he was like, oh, I need to bring some people down and you know do some stuff. And I was like, I volunteer as tribute. Yeah, let's, let's do it. <laughs> but you're you're clearly doing your part. So thanks, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming out. Ah, what a day. What a day we had together. Hell yeah. I mean, look at this. <laughs> this is crazy. You're gonna have like peppers and spices and squash. It's been a crazy day, pretty productive. I were the island the last six months. I've been to communities in every corner and we saw a lot of good progress, but it was where is the need greatest? Not just who needs help, it's where is the need greatest and how can we help the best? I went all over to Isabella, to all corners of the island and coming here, I don't know if, I don't know if you know, um, uh, Yokoboa is just, just down south from here and that is where the hurricane actually hit. It came in from there. So this area got hit so hard. They're still without power. Yeah, this yeah, in America, you, as America, it's been America, well, a year. We went this morning and did food distribution to families around the area. In America, that long after a hurricane that people still can't afford or have access to food. We dropped off cans of soup and things that are ready to be made, but we shouldn't have to be here. Yeah. This is insane. This isn't, it, it, it hurts, but I, we shouldn't have to be here, but we're happy. It's in this world. It definitely inspires others. What's that? We're planting seeds here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> literally, quite literally. Yeah. I know, I just got it. That's great. Is, uh, yesterday, yeah. we always talk about making concrete change and yesterday we literally used concrete to make this garden sustainable during the next hurricane uh, okay, got washed sure. away during the last one we used metal beams made a frame made a whole entire structure that we can board up if there's another storm and just doesn't really just all these things are blowing my mind it's it's well, beyond my wildest expectation Yo voy para Haití el mes que viene a trabajar. Esta es mi información, por favor, quiero una foto cuando estás listo con este proyecto, ¿ok? High five. Yeah. Chao, amigo. Ok, I think, I think we're recording here. This is going to be a one-on-one -on -one with Jody Del Giorno. I'm Jody Del Giorno, and we're live in Puerto Rico. Just a little air in here, Jody. We're down here with the Relief Foundation, and uh, it's been a great trip. We just... Uh, sealed an entire roof for for a lady who is in her 80s 
when her entire family left and she didn't want to leave so they left her behind but she had her church and her community and uh, it was good to see she was still happy she's still happy in her home even though it's been ravished and her property has been uh, pretty beaten up but Another good day. It took me five hours and a half to get to my house from here. How far is that? It's only nine minutes from here. You used to see all the trees, all the green. And when you don't see hardly nothing, everything down. The people lost their houses. My sister lost her house. My friend lost her house. Oh. It's very hard. Poor so. you. I'm sorry. I should be filming, but I should <laughs> to take pictures your job, David. to it's tell your job people to tell. tell. It's your job, and it's good for people to know what we went through. Yeah. And we have food here, thanks the Lord. But there were some people that didn't have no food, and they came by here to eat. Yeah, you fed them. The restaurant fed them. Yeah. My son, and there was a lot of people with no water, no food, no house, wow. no place to sleep waiting for the help and it took a long time the help to come yeah. it took a long time do you but know families that buried their family do you know people who did that you have to go there and did you did you know people mm -hmm. i know by two sources that they did but and did you know anyone who did no. that but you heard friends yes but it was true they buried their families yes they had to there was no no way for them to get out of their house no road so they had to do it there's a story of this guy I think was in Utuado, that he buried his mother, and that he, then he committed suicide. You will see so many people hurt, but they will gonna, they will talk to you with a smile. They <laughs> will open the their Puerto hearts Rican to way. you. Yeah. They will <laughs> open their hearts to you. Yeah. They will welcome you in their house without no rules. Yeah. They will give you some coffee too, if they have some. <laughs> That's what Puerto Ricans are. And the water was polluted, wasn't it? Everything was polluted. polluted. Everything was polluted. Um, they don't talk about that. Everything was Is polluted. Is it still polluted? I think it's still, uh, some, some places yeah, that's are. That's the problem, people. The water is still polluted. Yes, because yeah. a lot of animals die. Where they go through, the rivers, the lakes, yeah. where the water comes from. Yeah, the lakes? they die in the lakes. And then it comes to the houses. A lot of people die of bacteria. bacteria. Yeah. There's a lot of bacteria. Yeah. Because the, the water wasn't wasn't good to drink. Yeah. So yeah. people don't have the money to go and buy the water because we had to stay about two weeks because they couldn't open the places. They couldn't open to get the water. People couldn't get to the banks to get the money out. So they had a little bit of cash, they couldn't buy stuff because they don't have the money. So some places were worse than others, but the whole island. The whole island, electricity, everything. water, pollution, everything. Everything. I think there's people till today, I don't know, in Orbideros, they don't have electricity. Yeah. Till today. I know. Oh, May, June, June. No. They don't have electricity. No way to cook. So my family is in the United States. Uh -huh. Yeah, my family over there. So they were crying 
There was no way for them to communicate with us. So they were going crazy. Family, yeah. <laughs> so when we could talk, the only thing we did was cry. Yeah. We said, we survived, we're alive, yeah. we're okay. But if you see your island, you cry so for so long. Especially in San Juan, yeah. the hospital, they went through so much. I bet. They were operating on the adapter. I don't know if you're gonna be able to get that. But the adapter was making the surgeries with the light in their cell phone. Oh. He posted it. No, I don't know if he still has the job. I don't know if he still has the job. But he posted and he said, we're operating with the light with a cell phone. That, People are dying. Because we cannot do that. We cannot operate like that. Boy, oh boy. Because the generators went down. Yeah. They were bad. Yeah. It was yeah. hard to operate for them. Yeah. We put so much faith in technology, and then when it goes, it's, it's what do we do? It goes down. Technology goes down, goes down. Yeah. Hey, oh, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. Got you. So tell me what you're doing. Philly. Um, I, I'm here in Puerto Rico making a documentary about um, the El Movimiento de Autogestión, which doesn't actually have a great um, translation in English, <laughs> but it's self-management yeah. movement, which is something for where communities are um, just figuring out other different ways to organize. Sent for me, and although at first glance you were a stranger, but you kept me safe from danger. I am humbled now. Safe in your arms, no. Make it through.